I have to say hola, hola to in the Spanish people. Hello everyone, I am Diego Ruiz, member of the PBI social media team. I am here with the Dr. Ignacio Leal. He's a vascular surgeon in the Hospital Clinica de Navarra in Madrid. Uh, we are here to speak about the vascular access. This is the um, Achilles heel in the, in the procedures. Uh, so I would like to know how do you make your vascular access? What do you do? How do you choose? What is your procedure? Uh, Thank you, Diego. Thank you, guys, to the PBI community for having me here. It's my pleasure. I think this is the place to be. PBI December Paris, so why not? Uh, let's share a few minutes of this conversation with you in case you missed the, the presentation because I think I really think the message we share with the, with the audience is, is quite important. And the discussion was all about access for carotid distentin. As you know, as you guys know, the, we have a variety of different access. We have a variety of different techniques that you can choose. We have transfemoral access. We have transcarotid access. We have transradial or transbrachial access. And the three of them have, of course, advantages and disadvantages. Probably the key message from the presentation is that you need to plan your carotid artery stenting patients as the same you are doing, for example, for your EVAR cases. I am 100% sure that before you perform an elective EVAR, you have a CT, you measure the neck, you measure different sizes, lengths, and you choose your graft. Is correct? Okay, correct. correct. So for carotids, we need to start changing our philosophy and have, of course, a CT or an MRI of the arch of the supraortic trunks. So you know exactly which anatomical difficulties you could have, you could predict, and choose the best access. How do you choose? You make an ultrasound before the procedure, uh, you make the CT, the ultrasound, what do you do first? In the I really think, and according to guidelines, ultrasound is our screening method. So that it, it, we, use it, we use that to, to distinguish between normal patients and patients with suspected high critical lesion stenosis. In case the ultrasound is positive, what you have to do is order another imaging tool. And your CT and your MRI, it's up to you, it's up to your hospital, it's up to your pathway in your, in your practice, but you need to make sure that you assess the aortic arch, the origin of the supraortic trunks, and the intracranial circulation to make the best decision. Okay, do you have some patients that are very high risk, and you suppose that you have a high risk in the procedure? Suppose the women, suppose the calcification artery, what do you think about that? you have any special things that you need to think about that? Huh? I think we all know the guidelines, we all know the recommendations, but of course we have to translate that into our daily practice. So for us, in case we have a standard risk patient, we will go for endarterectomy in most cases, but in case we, we have patients with high risk criteria, that could be anatomical or that could be comorbid conditions, we go for stenting. The next question is your expertise, the access you have to the different techniques, and how do you perform with all the techniques? Most of the people is familiar with transfemoral access. A few of the people will be familiar with transradial or transbrachial or transcarotid. In our practice, our first option, if we have to stent a patient, will be transcarotid, will be T-card because of our, our, our experience. But for you guys, for you, Diego, for all the, all the attendees, try to choose what fits in your practice, what fits in your team. And of course, never forget that it's difficult to know how to do everything. And what is easier is to find the right people to help you if you are not an expert in any kind of access. But if you have a carotid practice, a strong carotid practice, you want to treat critical patients and difficult patients, you need to be able to offer all the techniques, all the, all the access, and all the neuroprotection systems available. I think that uh, we are very complete the interview. I appreciate that, uh, your cooperation, and thank you very much. Uh. Thank you.